heroes are potheads. So why drink and drive when you can smoke and fly? Beats are dash that got to legalize. All my heroes are potheads. Hello. And welcome to another episode yeah, he's with you. of Comics oh, on yeah. Cannabis, he's with you. where uh, you can actually... <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry, you came in. Can we do it again? We, we okay? You're live. All right, yeah, cool. Live. All right, yeah. Like I said, another another uh, episode of Comics on Cannabis. Christian came in, so he kind of threw me off. What's up, Christian? What's up, man? <laughs> uh, Comics on Cannabis, where we talk everything from uh, cannabis, sports, Pop culture, movies, it's a cool place to hang out where cannabis and entertainment collide. Uh, I am Ed Cho. I am your host. Along with me, I have my co-host, Mr. Derek Michael. What's up, Derek? Oh, man. I'm just happy to be here. This place is great. This place is great. We have to do a pan around later or something just to show the, t the tiles. This place is pretty amazing. Of course, running our board, we have Ming back there. What's up, Ming? Uh, what's up, everybody? Great to see you guys. Uh, to always see you good guys. to see you. And today we have a really special guest. Uh, like he really doesn't. Uh, you really there's not much you can really do to introduce this guy. He is probably the most uh, infamous infamous cannabis rights and free speech activist. Uh, the guy is an actor. He's a writer. He's a restaurateur, which uh, we're actually in right now. Uh, a freelance journalist, from what I hear. Yeah, a freelance journalist. <laughs> we are at New Jersey Weedman's Joint here in Trenton, which is right across, uh, oddly enough, which is right across the, uh, the city hall, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk right. about soon enough. But uh, with us right now is Ed Weedman Fortune. Ed. What's Welcome. up, man? What's going on? What's man? going on, man? It's oh, awesome good. to have you here, dude. It's amazing. Yeah. No, it's awesome to have you guys here. Uh, you guys are here in my place. <laughs> uh, uh, you're right. You're absolutely I'm right. I'm on your show, though, so I'm happy to be on your show. There's a lot of love there here. Go. Um, anybody like, that wait a minute. Comics and comedy? Oh, they gotta come here. Comics <laughs> on cannabis? That's right. You have. You know what? We found that he has a, a comedy night, a so Wednesdays? I can assure you I will be performing here. Uh, if I'm more than welcome to perform here, I'd absolutely, love to be here. Absolutely. Um, Anybody that knows cannabis, you don't get gonged here, though. You get bonged. Uh, there no, there it is. You know what? Then I'm gonna, if, if that's be the case, before man, the show. Yeah. I'm gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> you, you could bong me all day, every day, man. I'm all about this place. This is amazing too. Just so you know, uh, appreciate the, the this. Comics to come here to perform, get paid in weed. I'm always here, then, man. <laughs> I, I, I'm always here. You show up eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Dude, I'm always going to be here doing stand up. Bro, I, five in the morning, you'll see me here, man. As long as you pay me in weed, I, I, I'll be here. Don't you worry. Five, noontime, you mention it. All right, so here's the thing, guys. If you know cannabis, if you know New Jersey, this man, everybody, no introductions needed. But for the people that don't know who you are and uh, the people that want to and should get to know who you are, uh, give us a little background about yourself, Ed, what you're about and uh, why you are who you are. Hmm. And where do you start, right? <laughs> yeah, where, where do I you start. even start? That's a book. Yeah. I was born by the river. <laughs> <laughs> you ever hear Sam Cooke's song? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's change coming. Mm -hmm. that was, I, was, I was having a change thought. Oh, yeah. No, but... um. All right, my name is Edward Fortune, Robert Edward Fortune, actually. Um, I'm actually really from Camden County, but a few years ago I moved here to Mercer County. For the last 20-something years, though, I've been advocating for the legalization of marijuana. Um, I think that prior to 1997 and my arrest... Um, Which we'll talk my, about. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that. All my friends and stuff knew I was more into weed. Any, any of my friends, even when we were teenagers, man, like... Yeah, certain friends, you know, had the beer and the cigarettes, but I always had the weed, you know, no matter where we went. When they were drinking 40s, I had the weed. We'd go somewhere. If somebody wanted some weed, they would get it from me. I became, amongst my friends, I was that guy that had the weed. I always thought it was it should be legal. I was preaching it should be legal long before, uh, you know, I got all involved in all this official stuff. But, um, yeah, 1997, to be honest, I got caught smuggling a large amount of marijuana 40 pounds of what i got caught with it was more than that but i got caught with 40 pounds mm -hmm. and um you know i had this whole trial i was arguing publicly the law was wrong um i was going for this jury nullification defense so i was like i got arrested and next thing i know i'm running for congress <laughs> um, so that's what it takes know, <laughs> yeah and i wanted the jury to know who i was i wanted there to be a public opinion on weed and if you can get a public opinion on weed on the street you should be able to get a public opinion on weed in the jury box. Sure. I believe jurors 
have a right to judge the law as well as the facts. And, you know, that very first time in 1997, that was my tactic, that really public advocation, and I don't think the, the jury would convict me. People thought I was crazy. And right in the middle of the trial, one juror started crying. Now, listen, I was caught with 40 pounds. I, 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 I got caught with 40 pounds one time and then 15 pounds a few months later. And, and I had a couple other little, little things. I was, you know, was during that period of time, I was hustling hard, so I caught a couple charges. Anyway, yeah. um, and that was before I became, like, weed man. Like, these were, these were like, you know, I was a smuggler. I was, a, I was, I was in the game. Right. Um, so I got, uh, I got caught. Um, but I was also always a nerd. You know what I mean? Like, as much of the street bullshit I could get into, I was still nerdy as far as reading and books and understanding things. And somehow I understood what jury nullification was. So when I got busted, my whole idea was jury nullification. I'm going to get the jurors to judge the law because I'm caught red-handed. There's nothing I can say. I, it wasn't mine. It wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, right. the, But I wasn't going to sign a piece of paper walking in jail. That's how I felt. I was like, I'm putting it to the jury. I'm practically going to get on my knees and beg. You know what I mean? And right smack... And the prosecutors thought I was talking my way into jail. Everybody thought I was crazy, but I really felt that, you know, anything you say and do can and will be used against you or can also be used for you. Like, that's, that's, everything has a reciprocal. And I always realized that there were a lot of people out there who thought marijuana should be legal. So, on my jury, I think they're in, a, in the church choir. Why wouldn't they be on the juror, too? You know? So, my thought was they can't get 12. So, I started talking about. New Jersey can't get 12 in the 90s, you right. know? And and I went to trial in 2000 facing like 30 years in jail because I had to, I had in prison, I had the 40 pound case was the first degree crime. I had the 20 pound case was the And I had some other little bullshit that didn't turn, amount to too much anything, but all together I could at least got 30 years in jail um, if they ran them concurrently and all that, which right. they wouldn't have, but technically that's what I was facing. And, but I argued to my jury, the law was wrong. One juror started crying. They took her off the jury. An hour later, another one did. Two ladies started crying. They couldn't send me to prison. That's what they said. The one lady got kicked off for saying she couldn't send me to prison. My jury nullification defense was working. So right smack dab in the middle of my trial, after three years of running for office, talking all kinds of crap, I was saying everything. I, that was my first pulled out my weed mobile. Like, like It's like I got arrested. And part of my defense plan was to create this persona called N.J. Weedman, who would be fighting the Goliath of government about weed. Right. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> right well, smack dab in my trial. Two jurors were crying. The prosecutor was afraid that I was going to win, you know, or at least get a hung jury. So they had this big huddle. They made phone calls all over the place. They had to talk to this judge, bigger judges. They had to consolidate things. Anyway, they offered me this deal that... Instead of getting like 30 years in jail, I get like three to six months in, 30 years in prison, I get three to six months in jail and be released into this program. That was a win, even though I pled guilty. I had to plead guilty to get that. Right. And I did. I, and, 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 I, and I felt like it was a win, like even though I feel like you should, I, you, sh you should go to trial. I felt bad about taking that deal. But at the time, I was still scared. It was my first trial. And to me, Forcing the prosecutor to go from first degree charges to fourth degree charges, basically second degree charges, time as far as time wise, I could be out in six months. I took the deal. Then I always regret it. Then I regretted it after that. First of all, after I got to jail, that three to six months turned into 18 months. You know, I had to fight to get out, you know, saying that they violated their promise. But anyway, I did get out. And it was a long process. At some point, I got out. I got my life back together again. But at that point, I was stuck being weed man. Right. I, like, I felt like my life got changed. I was, not only did I do that, that, that I did 18 months in jail. I did um, about another t 14 months on, on um, ISP, it's called. At one point, they even violated me and sent me back to jail for making commercials about weed, by the way. Um, I did five months in jail again for making commercials. Remember that I went to jail for five months for making commercials advocating the legalization of marijuana in 2002 and three. Right. Um, in fact, if you Google it, people Google njweedman.com slash censorship, and it's it's a whole it's two two big pages I devoted to censorship. If you Google that, NJ Weedman, you'll see. And it's a history of how I've been in jail. I've been jailed several times in this country 
for what I say. Um, not so much what I do. Right now, I'm doing something, but you know, so if I get arrested right now, we'll get to that. But if I get arrested right now for what I'm doing, it's a justifiable arrest. Can they get a conviction? That's a whole other story. But um, I've also been jailed for what I say and what I've done. Um, so that's what happened to me in 2002. Like, I went to jail. Right. I, while I was on parole, I got locked up for making commercials for five months. I had a whole federal case. I won the case, too. I represented myself. Um, the ACLU came to help me. This public law firm came to help me. But anyway, I won. And it, it created a, a prisoner rights free speech case law. If you look up prisoner rights free speech case law right yeah. now, my case is like the leading case like for but prisoners across the country. Well, they're just going after Apparently, they were, I have just, a they were big mouth. for you, man. You know no, I, have a, like, hey. I have a big mouth. I'll admit, I have a big mouth. Yeah. You know, like okay. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, yeah, it's that simple. You know, I poke the bear, the bear pokes me back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I slip and dip sometimes, but I get hit every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but yes, I'm, I, I, I've been fighting, and I've been fighting. I feel like like this system ruined my life. You know, I had, I had certain things, and I, everybody think, like, man, like what was Weed Man's goals at one time? Before he got arrested. I mean, you know how many people's <laughs> yeah. lives get changed because they get arrested and for weed? It yeah. fucks you up. And I was mad about it. You know, and that's that's the genesis of weed, man. I got arrested in 1997 with 40 pounds of weed. And it fuck, that fucked my life up. 40 pounds of weed didn't fuck my life up. At the time, I had a house in the suburbs. I mean, I can say I had a house, a fence, dogs, pool in the yard. I own my own business. I had a Corvette, a Jaguar, and a tractor trailer side of my yard, and I was making over a hundred grand a year. Yeah. And yes, I sold a little weed too. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and bam, I get busted selling weed, and within a, a six months, my truck got repoed. My my uh, I mean my my within like my truck wasn't done being paid off, and the police alerted to my finance company yeah. that they were going to seize my truck, so that they repoed it. Oh wow! Right, Damn. and I could have paid it off, but then the police would be waiting to fuck to seize it. Wow! So it was like, bam! They just totally took away my really legitimate source of income. Within six months, I had at least a purchase plan for the house that I paid. Put, I put a lot of cash down on that house, and all of a sudden, six months later, they're trying to take the house back because yeah. I had no source of income. So bam! And then I end up going to jail, going to prison. They said three Jeez. to six months. I did eighteen months. So yes, I felt like the government ruined my life, and I've been the New Jersey government. And I've been. This is my way of resisting the government, like just fighting and hoping for legalization, trying to fix the law to fuck me up, you know. Right. I really thought one day I would run for office. I thought I was going to be a Democrat. I was going to be some city council guy somewhere, some freeholder. Maybe one day get onto some. Like I really had all those thoughts as a kid, like that this is what I was going to do. So after I think I busted and everything. I still kind of like ran for office, but now it was all satire. Like fuck you. <laughs> you know, I'm running under the legalized marijuana party. Yeah. You know, I'm doing like and like that. I just this persona weed man always fighting the government and that's the genesis of it so i don't know what story you know about me i've i've said everything and so much of it gets covered and the crazy thing about it, my life the last 20 years so much of it got covered because so many members of the media agreed with me right you know what i mean so many i i don't know how many pothead reporters did stories about me <laughs> because you know what i mean like oh and, and, and it's been it's been that um you know i've been on some of the most major media in the country i've been on cnn before you were just um, on tv right now we just saw yeah, it man we just uh, saw that yeah. on news 12 right now yeah. just i'm on i'm on i'm on i'm on tonight in in philly on um on the fox channel but i've been when i was in la i was in well, i got on la stations wktl i think it was I've been on um, TMZ, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like and, and it's all because of this whole idea of fighting the government about weed, you know. So, you know, sometimes I'm say the I'm the Robin Hood of reefer, you know what I mean? Hey, like, I never heard like, that one, but there you go. Yeah, around around here, I think I'm the Robin Hood of reefer. People perceive me as the good guy, the sheriff, and the police are, are Nottingham. I'm mm -hmm. the good guy. Yeah, you know, uh, even when there's been like like people have si openly sided with me on, on on certain things. Even like when they threw me in jail, everybody felt bad for me. The jurors felt bad for me. Like, like you know, normally we think of a criminal, he's in jail. You know, yeah. he's so this that the other. They got to keep him in a cage. You know, they argued. The prosecutors argued to keep me in a cage because they couldn't get a conviction. I think I'm non-convictable. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been saying this that. for a long time. I've be, oh, in between all these things I was talking about, I've beat several cases too. Yeah, like, there were several other cases. Burlington County, I gave them a nice two piece. I mean, <laughs> like, like, bam, like we're in a fight. Psh, psh, psh. I knocked out Mar- uh, Michael Luciano uh, 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 in one trial and came back a few months later and knocked him out again. So I beat Mer- Mercer County twice. I mean, Burlington County, right here, in Mercer County. Listen, Mercer County has charged me with 41 different offenses in five years. The first, really, was the first two years. But anyway, they charged me 41 different offenses. Guess how many convictions they got? I'm gonna guess none. Zero. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm gonna guess not. Yeah. Zero. Um, a lot of the cases were dismissed by judges. The jury dismissed some. And some of the prosecutor's office was afraid to to, to get it. You get off on that though. Admit it. You yeah, you do. get off on the fact I that do. you know what I'm I'm, I'm scot right. free all this time that they put into it. You you know what I'm saying? You, I'm the last man standing. Yeah. I'm still standing. Right. I'm still saying what I'm saying. Right now I'm practically like all right. You made it legal now. <laughs> You're gonna get twelve people to arrest me for selling weed. You're gonna get twelve <laughs> people to put me in prison for selling weed. <laughs> I have no incentive not to sell weed right now. They can come in and embarrass themselves and take my weed and get get a, catch a charge, and then what? I'm not taking no plea. I learned my lesson the first case. The first case I had, which I was describing in 1997, I took that plea. And the plea said I got three to six months in jail. They reneged on the deal. I did 18 months in jail. Mm-hmm. They were trying to get five or six years out of me after I took the deal. Right. You know, I was able to fight my way out of that. And I've been kind of fighting the government ever since on this issue. Now, now... Legalization has been won, as far as I'm concerned. The yeah. public is on the side of legalization. That well, fight is over. Like 20 years ago, the argument for legalization was, it's good for this, it's good for that, it's good. You don't even have to say that no more. Everybody knows how that. How do you feel? Well, uh, I gotta you know ask. I, mean? I gotta ask. How do you how do you feel about last Tuesday? Like, last like, Tuesday? Like, what, what are you feeling? Because I know. Oh, you're posi- oh. Well, first of all, before we do that, let's preface that. Let's preface um, when uh, New Jersey legalized marijuana uh, for medicinal purposes. OK, um, everybody thought it was a great thing. Like everybody, everybody, everybody was like, all right, it's legal for medicinal purposes. I was um, there's this off. this guy. Right? I would, so, no, you, well, here's the thing. I mean, you're the, the forefront of, of cannabis, right? So you would think the guy at the forefront of cannabis would be like, yeah, pump your fist. This guy, <laughs> right, was literally like, nah, I'm, I'm pretty pissed about <laughs> the whole thing. But, so, see, but, but see, several, explain several yourself things. on that before we go into you know, what we're all at right. right now. <laughs> all right, weed's a natural substance. It's been around forever. You know what I mean? Like, like it is not nuclear fission material. It does not need all this crazy uh, 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 security means and all this. Like, this is a natural thing. It's something that people had, people have had for years, right? Yeah. It's one of the countercultural substances. It's the, it's the substance of the people. Like, it always has been an uncontrollable thing that the government can never get a hold of. No matter which society it's in, this is, like, natural. And that's how it's been preached to it. Now... We got this unnatural thing happening where the government's coming in and taking it and handing it to corporations and trying to say that we have to buy our weed from the corporations. And that's what's going on right now with this whole legalization scheme. And most people didn't read the language of, of the question. And language means a lot. And I've always, I would, like I said, I'm a kind of a nerd too. On top of a small print, you mean? Yeah. yeah, it's not really small print. It was right there, bold, right in front of everybody. But nobody right. reads. If they put it like eight pictures, people would have figured out what it said. Right. But it didn't. They don't have pictures. It's words. And a lot of people don't read anymore. If it's more than 120 words for a text or a Twitter, people don't read it. They read the headlines. So the headline of that question was the legalization for the adult use of marijuana. And then, if anybody had read further, it also said. This does not legalize marijuana. This creates a constitutional amendment to allow for blah, 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 blah. Right. Then it says, and it also creates a CRC board, a Cannabis Regulatory Commission, a CRC board or something like that. Yeah, they got to figure out how they're going to profit. And then that group, those group of five people, would make the bills and make the laws and the rules on regulated cannabis. And then the rest of the description describes it as regulated cannabis. Only regulated cannabis was made legal. And so there's a, so words mean something. They call regulated cannabis coming from one of the dispensaries, one of the corporations that they're creating. That's legal. You to have this weed right here is not legal. 
Well, Nobody. Well, that's that's not what you voted for. This is what you voted for. This is still illegal. Well, wasn't the idea of that? It was that if it's just medicinal, you know what I'm saying? No, that's what makes it, that's no, what makes medicinal it. laws were ten years ago. This is not not the medicinal law. This was flat out legalizing it. That's what just happened. No, no, this one, right? Yeah, yes. no, no, this one. Yes, I was yes. talking about the other one, right? Oh, the other one. Yeah. The other one. I remember I was pissed at that too, and I went to California over that. Again, I still felt the same thing. It was the people's drugs, this, that, and the other. And they made it all just these corporations. The ATCs here in New Jersey, the alternative treatment centers, there's 10 of them now. At one point, it was six of them. Um, in fact, for a long time, it was only three. But anyway, they're the alternative treatment centers. They're the only ones that are allowed to sell medical marijuana. Right. Right? And, like, to me, that was crazy too. Again, at the time, I was watching the model of california i was watching what was going on in california in, a, in, a, in like 2008 2007 i was going back and forth to california on a regular basis i was really like paying attention i was trying to figure out how i can get into this market over here like as it was exploding and um as i watched the uh, it was actually rika sore was on that team and and senator scotari as they were putting together the medical marijuana bill i was getting angrier and angrier you were you're right because it was turned into this whole corporate thing yeah and i was like but this is weed. Like what? Like what? Right. And I just couldn't understand it. And ultimately, in my frustrations, at some point, I went to California, and I went there. And within eight months of running, I had a medical marijuana dispensary. It was a reggae spot. I it was successful. I was on Hollywood Boulevard. I was in my realm, and I lasted there for five years. But I basically went there because of the whole way that they were doing it in New Jersey. Like it was such so ridiculous to me. Like this whole corporate thing, right? And I and like I, and there was no room for me in it, you know what I mean? Like there's no room. You got to be a millionaire. You got to have this that. So I went to California. And at some point, five years into it, four years into it, <laughs> believe it or not, the state of New Jersey, uh, Michael Luciano, the Mercer, a Burlington County prosecutor, reached out to L.A., contacted a U.S. attorney with a letter, which I have a copy of, and in the letter. He describes me as a drug dealer from New Jersey who lives in California and sends weed back and forth to, to, to L.A. and asked if they could have their assistance. Their response was to send DA agent Patrick Kelly to, my, to, to investigate me and totally destroy me, did not arrest me, seized all my possessions, destroyed me. And at the time now, I went out there. Like I said, pretty broke. Within a couple months, I had a dispensary. I was doing good. Four years into it, I had two big, huge uh, grow operations. I had a dispensary. I had a lounge next door to it. Um, I had a couple apartments. You know, I was I was doing very well. I had a nice amount of money coming in. Yeah. I was on TMZ. I was on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, I was life. doing Spike TV. I became a little celebrity in, in Hollywood myself as Weed Man, the guy yeah. from New Jersey with the weed spot right there on Hollywood Boulevard. That was me. You know, I was meeting all these celebrities. I was going to shows, all this stuff. And then, like I said, Mercer County sent the letter. Next thing I know, the DEA is smashing me out in uh, out in L.A. I ended up back here, and for a little while, you know. And then at the same time, I had a I had a bout of a uh, bone cancer. So I went through that for a year or so. I recouped at my mom's house in Sicklerville. And then when I was ready to go back to California, I started looking around. I got reconnected with my kids. And I was like, man, I'm not going back to California. No. I'm going to Trenton. I'm going to the state capital. <laughs> I'm bringing my fight here. You know, the state of New Jersey reached out to California and ruined my life. So this is all revenge coming back here, coming to coming to Trenton. Yeah doing this you know this is this is my revenge for destroying what happened to me what happened to my life in california to be honest it was like double revenge because it first ruled my life in 1997 when i was busted and i lost my truck and i lost my house and right. you know i went to prison and all that so this was this is all kind of like revenge for me now here i am look at me sitting on state street every time the state has given me charge has, has issued charges the last few years i've beaten them all mm -hmm. um I basically, I mean, I'm not saying I'm daring them to arrest me, but basically I was so mad. I'm so mad about things that if I, you can't, if I, you know, include me. Include yeah. people like me. Let people like me be legal. So you got these rich white guys, or I want to say political white guys, who are writing the bills and the rules and the laws for the rich white guys. Right. There's no room for nobody else. They're making it corporate this. Who needs to, why do you need $2 million to grow weed? Look, I got weed growing right outside right now. Right. Absolutely. I, like, what? 
What do you want? What? <laughs> you need $2 million to get the license, and you got to do this, that, and the other. To be a distributor, you have to do this, that, and the other. All these hundreds of thousands of dollars, you need this, you need that. Man, I've been distributing marijuana off and on for, <laughs> for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy. Like, like it's this whole unnaturalness of it. That's not how weed is. Weed is peace and love and share and everything. Like, we share, we pass to the yeah. left. Like, all that COVID's really fucked that up, though. Nobody yeah, wants yeah, to pass yeah, to the yeah, left, though. Yeah, no. You true. notice yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I, just, yep. I constantly give people joints now. Like, nah. Yeah. Whereas before, I'd roll a fatty and we'd be sharing it. Yep. But now, yeah. like, nah. It'll come back go. to that, I'm sure. Maybe. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. It might have changed shit. There's gonna be a certain. There's gonna be a certain point. Of, yeah. There's gonna be a certain point of. There's gonna be a certain amount of people who never share joints no more. I hope not. The case. Um, comics. Uh, comics on cannabis. We were talking to um, Ed Weedman Fortune. With what you're with, with what you're saying right now, with you know the uh, the white bread not being able to <laughs> allow like the minorities get a part of it. Do you think that's gonna well? And that happened uh, obviously with. Um, the medicinal part of it now that what just happened the past tuesday are you right. afraid are you afraid that is happening that that's, is that is that happening exactly because everyone's happening. Gonna, well people are saying it's going to be a little different now Again. because you know what it it happened in the past right uh you know you learn from your mistakes the whole medical marijuana program this whole if they if you want to make medical marijuana legal you can make medical you can just make it legal you can make it legal people do use whatever substance they want for their own medicine in their own body they could have did it like that Right, it could have been, and, and they could have had a free market system where people could open up places and sell marijuana. Certain people would be good at, it, certain people would be bad at. It. If you want the Walmart of weed, you can have the Walmart of weed. I don't care. I'd rather go to the little, the little guy. Anyway, right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, even now, Look, you want to go to a record store? Do you really go to go to Target to buy right. a record? No. You find that that little record store, and you go in there, and you this, that, the other. You know, like, and the same thing with weed. You know, like, like. And then there would be people who are better at it. Look how I market myself here. I have a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I sell munchy food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a little lounge area. I have a lounge area in the back. We play music. Which is probably one of the coolest I, places I've I, been doing in the past. I, like, I totally amazing, cater to potheads. This is the wave of the future. You know what I mean? I, I'm Ten catered. foot grow light. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm catering to the future. I'm a pothead. If I was to pick how, how I would like to have a place to go to, it would be very similar to exactly what I built. You right. know that old thing? Build it, they will come. I built it. And they're coming. And they're coming. Tell they're me coming. this. You know? Why did you feel, and, and it was, but why did you feel that, that peaceful disobedience was going to be so effective in spreading your message? I don't know, but people, it resonates. Even right now, what I'm doing right now, I say I'm in my Rosa Parks moment. You know right. who Rosa Parks was, right? Of Rosa Parks basically sparked the, 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 the modern day civil rights movement with her refusing to get off the bus. Well, you know, I, with a play on those words, I say right now I'm refusing to get off this can of bus. Like I'm not getting off this can of bus. Yeah. This is a business. It's a cannabis business. You want to call it a cannabis business? Yo, that's even crazy how they did that. When I went to prison, it was marijuana. When I woke up every day for some 1,200-something days altogether, I was there because of marijuana. My life was destroyed, ruined, changed forever. Can't get it back because of marijuana. Now it's become Caucasian acceptable cannabis. <laughs> and... <laughs> I got a jail cell, and they're allowed to sell. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. Nope, 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 nope. I'm selling too, and this is what this sign's about. Sell weed like I'm white. Over there on my counter where I sell weed, this is right here. I constantly say that. Every time I have somebody who I might suspect to be a police officer or somebody investigating, I make sure I say certain things. Yeah. And I want to make sure that that's part of my, my trial statements and everything, because I want the jury to hear those. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm not taking no plea. I'm, I, I'm setting up a perfect case for a prosecutor who wants to arrest me, but I don't think he'll get 12, and that's right. what I'm saying. And I want to say that I'm doing this as civil disobedience to effectuate change. So far, they've allowed me to do it. I don't know why. <laughs> Did somebody, somebody say, listen, if you arrest him, you're giving him the podium that he wants. Don't give him the podium. I don't know if that happened. Yeah. I don't know if they're like, you know what? It's about ready to be legal, and who cares what he does? Just ignoring. I don't. I have no idea exactly what happened. But all I know is, two years ago, I came out all angry. And I was mad, and I was like, I'm like, like, fuck these guys. You know what? I'm gonna sell weed like I'm white publicly. 
<laughs> and you have. And, <laughs> and at first, listen, every few days, I was hiding all my weed. I was having anxiety attacks. Like, oh, shit, they're coming today. They're coming today. I'd be watching my cameras. A police car would be around the corner for something else. And I'd be fucking panicking. Like, they're coming. <laughs> they're finally coming. I hardly ever hide my weed anymore. I'm more afraid of somebody coming through the window and stealing my weed. I'm more afraid. I think of, that they're afraid. You yeah, know what I mean? Because uh, they have a PR department. Yeah. <laughs> you you want to talk you know? about a guy that's not afraid? I, I saw your vice on TV. I saw mm-hmm. that th- this guy was out outside, right in front of City Hall, in front of the governor's but, house. Yeah, no, yeah. that was the governor's office. Oh, the governor's house, right? Yeah, the governor's and, office. And and, and and he's selling weed, right? And, and, and <laughs> not, not only selling weed. I, I think you had, did. You have clones. Yes, I, I, I had clones. And you had plants. Yeah, and you had plants. The clones own plants. That was my protest. Yeah, yeah, to, that was my protest to the uh, to the uh, no home grow. Wow. That's like I'm fucking growing weed at home. Wow. Like, Fuck <laughs> that is so Matter of fact, here <laughs> goes weed for anybody who wants to grow weed at home. Here, I got some clones for you. Like that's what that was about. Uh, you gotta go and check <laughs> this guy out online and check out some of those videos. Uh, yeah, I was sitting there and I'm like, this guy is gonna like. And the cops came out, right? And yeah, you were just sitting moved there down the street, right? You, that's you, all yeah. you, no, you, you were sitting there. You're like, arrest me, motherfucker! Like, <laughs> well, I, I wasn't moving. Like, 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 arrest me. Like, I was like, nope, I'm not moving. I'm not leaving. And then everybody was telling me like, just go, just go. Remember he pushed me at one point. I okay, thought one of the funniest yeah. things is that you couldn't get your joint. I open. couldn't get my <laughs> joint. <lit. laughs> yeah, was funny. Yo, I was so upset times. about that. See, if you guys watch this, here's what <laughs> you do. I was so on Vice funny. a couple times. Oh, good stuff. But this one particular time, it go to Vice or type in, meet the guy. The title of that is "Meet the Guy Selling Weed at This Governor's Office." Yeah, I think that's it. It's yeah, like it's a very long title, but that's it. But just do NJ Weed Man Vice. And all three times I was on there, it pop up, and then you'll see that title and click on it. You'll see what we're talking about. Yeah, but I had just fine. got out of jail for some bullshit, right? I beat the case and everything, right? I had that uniform on, which I stole from jail at the time. So I got out of jail. Hold and, on. And I with, got, my I stolen, with my stolen jumper, I did a protest by selling weed at the governor's office. <laughs> he stole the jumper on the way. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's kind of like, it was like a like, mean, it's like a mean souvenir. Because look, let me, the irony of that is, when you first go to jail, you, man, when I, you first get there, they give you a uniform. So I got that uniform. I wrote on the back of it, it says political prisoner. And in jail, a lot of times you're not allowed to write on the, on the thing. And I remember I wrote political prisoner. All the guards, everybody knew me. The, the captains, everybody knew me. I wrote political prisoner on it, right? The lieutenants and everybody came and looked at it. But nobody, like, they were look, coming to look, but they weren't, like, they usually they could charge you. Like, guys would come put gang signs on their shit. They'd yeah. come charge them, and they'd take yeah. their shit and everything, right? So so they came and kind of looked, political prisoner, hmm. And they just left it alone. At some point, they had conversations about it, right? Now, normally, you wear it for about three days. You take it off, and then you exchange. Yeah. That's what they do, right? I took mine off, used it as a pillow, and stuck it under there. And that's the uniform. The one that I took wore to court every single time. It actually has never been washed. That's the one I wore to court every time. So because it had political prisoner. If you look at my trial, during my trial, I wore it during my trial. And it has political prisoner. So to me, it was like a souvenir, a reminder of trial, and this, that, and the other. That's the uniform I wore during my trial, right? They let me, listen, in jail, you know, you're only allowed to have one. Yeah. I had like three. <laughs> that one was my pillow, and nobody ever took it. When I was time to leave, I took it. Sometimes they would be search through cell searches, and they're searching everything, and they would see clearly, Weedman has more than one jumper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my pillow. They let me have it. That was one of the little perks I got for being Weedman. Nobody, nobody mess with my jumper. When your time is up, can you take it if you wanted no. to? No. Oh, I don't know. No, that's what I was saying earlier. He stole his pres- jumper on the I way out. Oh, I, I know he did. I know he did. Yes. Oh, no wonder. It's, it's like, county property. No Listen, <laughs> if somebody, if some county sheriff property. decided to do it, they could actually probably come here to retrieve their shit. Like, it's clearly stolen property. I stole it from the county jail. I <laughs> wore it funny. before. I sat here and I'm like, I'm like what the fuck? Yeah, yeah this actually, you may not want to sit too close. It's what? never been washed. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's been I appreciate that. that, that uh, that's, that's always good to because know. Because in the, in the jail, if you, if you wash it, you send it off and it ain't coming back to you. You know what I mean? I wrote, yeah. I wrote 420. Oh, that's right. Me, yeah. that, was, that was the one I wore every time I went to court. See, if I showed you, let me show you. Yeah. Mark's still on the back of it. Yep, there it is. Yeah. It's a little faded, but you can it's see it. It's a little faded, but, you know. Wow. Is that? Actually, yeah, you know that. what? Yeah. I never sent it to be washed. 
I actually did wash it like in the sink. Wow. At the, at, you know, just to get some funk out of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to get the funk out of it, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad I'm sitting next to it, really, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, never really, it's never really been washed. washed. Oh, if you're on one day, we're going to see that in like a charity auction or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what? Yeah. 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 Make something yeah, yeah, let's see if somebody wants to bid on it one day. Yeah, I should You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just to see. I want to I want to ask you um this is this is this is something I'm actually kind of curious and we we we've talked about here too. There is no doubt in our mind, anyone's mind, from anyone you've talked to, anyone, you know, we've seen that as far as social justice and what you think is right because you've 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 fought you you you've fought the fight. You you you're fighting right now. You've gone to jail, you know, wrongly like like basically you have won publicly. Well, I've, you, I've beat the state I mean, in exactly. a way that says the public is on my side. And I believe the public's on my side now. Right. If I say that little guys, not just me, not just black guys, little guys, everybody. Right. What the hell? Why can't you grow your own weed? Why can't you sell to your buddy down the street or your buddy down the street come over and buy from you? Why can't you barter and trade? Why can't, what, how come it's only these big corporate, corporations get to be legal? Mm -hmm. That's what just happened. Right. And it got passed off as legalization. And it's right. not legalization. It clearly only regulates, it clearly only legalizes regulated cannabis. Like, what? What is regulated cannabis? Well, like I said, it's, they it, want their cut. It's, it's gonna only, it's only it. if you buy it from them. So it's about money. That's not legalization. Right. So it's, it's, it's from it's, their corporations you can buy it. It's a money thing. Right? Yes. It's, it's all is, is yes. it's, 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 it's all about money. Everybody yes. wants a piece of their pie of that, right? Right. Well, here's the thing, though. And like I said, Derek and I have talked about it as well. There's people out there, white people, white bread people, that they, are... They want to sell, too. Well, no. They're saying flat out they're, they're going under the guise of social justice. They're going under. They don't really care. Uh, yes. uh, you know, they yeah. really don't. You, you've met people. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. They're saying, you know what? A white bread. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're like, yeah. you know, let's, what, why, I just want illegal. Yeah, you know, why I want illegal. Like I'm talking that. about social justice. I'm talking about the African American, the brown people. You know, I'm, I'm talking no. about anybody that's getting, you know, put away. I'm having a hard time sleeping tonight, right? Social justice, right? White people, right? And, and then they sell out. And then you know they're doing it. All right, because there's a money grab here somewhere. They don't really care. You, once again, you went through the wall. You got bloodied. So obviously, there are people. There are people that care. All right, there are people right. that obviously it's really important to them, and I can understand that. You know, I mean, it's it, what's going on is wrong. You know, but when you have people out there that you know haven't experienced it. They know they're using the guise as social justice, mm -hmm. the guise of, of legal cannabis, for their own financial gain. Right. right. What do you? I mean, what do you say to people like that? Or what do you say to people that you know that? I mean, I, I mean personally, you can see so through it. Many... I think. I think you can see through it. Like you could tell when somebody's full no. Crap. But you know what? That's not. That's not wrong to me. If if that if that is their niche of how they're down with legalization, like all oh, comers, man. There's different angles of everything. When I when I'm sitting there arguing from the point standpoint of uh, of uh, of a former black marketeer or a former, you know, I'm I'm an illegal guy, and I'm arguing for my inclusion into this legal market, right? Mm -hmm. I don't expect the housewife over here who wants to grow three plants in her backyard to have my argument. Right. So if her argument is her argument, then her I'm, she's still my ally because she's arguing for legalization. Right. So if there was that guy that said had that opinion, and, but he was arguing for legal, he wants legalization. I'm down with him. Yeah. What gets me and irritates me when I get some of those people look at me like, what? Why is it gonna be about black and white? Right. You know. When they're talking about hey, social justice, wait right? a minute. <laughs> yeah. Why does it um, you know, like it's really like the rich guys, it's not the white guys, like. When I get them to say that, it's like, listen, don't take it to heart that way. But the race card has been played against me my whole life. Why are you mad that now it's in my hand and I'm playing it? Right. You know, sometimes I think that way. Right. You know, like, listen, this, yes, am I a little extreme with it? Am I playing the race card when I'm saying I'm selling weed like I'm white? You damn right. <laughs> I got me a fucking ace. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and right now... During this, uh, all these, you know, there's things going on, and it's not that I'm not wrong, and I'm not wrong, because listen, there's something called Google nowadays, right? You can Google image, go to Google image, right, and type in names, and watch the names to pop up. So you can Google first every single one of the dispensary owners here in New Jersey, all eight, all they're all of them the CEO, CEOs of their corporations. You can go look at them, yeah. right? You can put their images right there. None of them look like me. Look up 
who goes to prison for weed? Who would love a guy like me? I went to prison for weed. My end of the day story, my fucking Hollywood fucking story is I end up owning a big weed dispensary, a weed, big weed distribution system somehow, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Right? I think I even have the public persona to pull it off. <laughs> yeah. You know, I could be Ronald McDonald of weed. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know about Ronald McDonald. <laughs> but I mean, you know what I'm saying. I think I have a little creepy there. A little creepy yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that, but you know, I was just, I, I, just got, I, I had to grab, I had to grab a, 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 something recognizable. Ronald McDonald, <laughs> Ronald McDonald stone. popped up so fast. <laughs> That's a little too much. <laughs> Yo, but anyway, I, you know, listen, do you think I could have other places called NJ Weed Man's Joint? Or Weed Man's Joints? Hell yeah! Franchise, listen, man. Franchise listen. You it. see, you see, and I say Ronald McDonald also because the big M's. Right. It was just like a big N J with a weed leaf behind it. There you go. You know yeah. that'd be my logo. Absolutely, like, like, Dude, I, I thought of this it, stuff man. like that. You what, know, what like, stopped you from doing that? Is that is that what's next it's, for you? You think? Yeah, these are on the, these are all things that. Are, but I, I want to be legal. Right. How can I invest all that type of energy and time in doing those type no, of things? No, they can come take it legal. away if they want yes. to use the law against yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's frustrating. Even what I'm doing right now, I think I am totally hindered because I can't get in the market. I can't put my name on it. Look, all these guys that are getting in the market. Last week they were selling cars. Now they're like, I'm a weed activist. I'm a gun entrepreneur, and I yeah. want to live. Right? And they never sold no weed. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a whole lot of them. There's a lots of them. Yeah. You know, never seen more than a, a, a couple. Of, joints in front of them you know right never been to a grow house never been to the fields never knew how i got here i have transported hundreds of pounds across the country back and forth i've been in fields that were just huge fields in northern california huge fields in different places of the country that i've i flocked to those places at right. one point because i really just believed in those type of things and now here i am in new jersey a very recognizable figure and everything but i can't get into this market that they're creating and like that's the crazy thing. They're creating this whole phony market instead of legalizing the existing market. Right. And there's a lot of people in the existing market. Look up some of these pop ups. You ever go to a pop up? Uh yeah, absolutely. So all right. Uh huh. Just about everybody in those pop ups would love to be legal. Sure. They would love to have their own store and this, that and the other and, mm-hmm. and sling weed like they're doing. Sling this product, that product. All these people still be popping up and hiding on the internet and disappearing and all that. Right. How many of them would love to just open up a store and be legal? There's a whole lot of us, but that's not who they're talking. Half of them got got penalties. And I mean, uh, well, first of all, it's it's expensive as well too, isn't it? To get a license, it's, it's like 20, it's like twenty grand. But why? Like- because these guys are writing the law to say that they can write the law to say anything. Why are they writing the law saying you need twenty grand? Why are they writing the law saying you need a hundred thousand? Why are they writing the right. law saying these are guys writing the laws? Like they're they're writing these. First of all, they don't know what they're doing. It, yes, yeah. they're just creating creating yeah. it, and How they're much creating it by two million, listen, like a million of dollars. Listen, right? How I, much you need? I like, think I, I should be able to just walk across the street right there and get me a change the the, the status of my of my business or my business operation. Just say instead of a restaurant tour, I just call myself a four twenty lounge, yeah. or a or a marijuana distribution place or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Right, and like pretty much that simple if i gotta pay some money pay some money Twenty thousand? no you know what i pay taxes on whatever sales tax if 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 i could get be legal i pay taxes listen i've always said taxation instead of incarceration these guys are all arguing about taxes for the money for the for the government i'm saying there's no segment of the of the uh marijuana activist movement that begs to be taxed more so than the current black market. The current black market believes, and if you've been in prison for weed, taxation instead of incarceration. That's what we believe. I would gladly have paid taxes on that marijuana I got caught with in 1997 than had done the time. Yeah, of course. That, of course. That, you know, I did 18 months. So in fact, listen, I didn't really do 18 months. I did 18 months in jail and prison first at Riverfront State Prison in Camden. I got released into some program where I had some dickhead who thought he was better than me as a pro- as a parole officer, uh-huh. you know, whatever, fucking guiding my life and telling me what time I had to go to bed. And then he got mad at me and locked me up for five months. <laughs> yeah. And then I was on the program again for about 12 months, about 12 months, eight months before they got rid of me, whatever. Bam. Right. And that period of life, I can never get back. Those four to four years of life can never get back. And it was all fucked up. Right. I, I was, listen, my parole job was pumping gas. You know, that was that was the job I had as as pumping gas and like not knocking gas pumpers, but 
at that period of my life, you know, yeah, I'm pumping gas because I got busted with weed. That that. I had that Lionel Afro Man song, you know, like I was pumping gas because <laughs> I got high and got arrested. You know what I mean? Like this, this bullshit, right? So, I don't know. Now everything's being legal. No, I, I said all these different weed skills or whatever. My, my marketing, my place is a destination place now, and it's illegal for people, you know, for for for. For pie heads, like I'm right. a destination for pie heads. Yeah. It's like, like you guys are really close. This I have people come here from Virginia, I have people come here from Connecticut, Northern New Jersey. People come here all the time. I'm a block away from the train station. I've had guys get on a train somewhere else in Baltimore or something, right up here, get off the train, yeah. and come in here because they can see me on the internet. I have an internet presence. You know, people in different parts of the country follow me. Right. When you post this and link this to me, there will be people from different parts of the country going to. Yeah, tune, yeah. Gonna tune in and watch this mm -hmm. because I just have a, I've been weed man forever, and you know, not that I'm that 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 like 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 I'm not a I'm not a celebrity in a sense. I don't have any um. I don't have any like God given skill. You know what I mean? Like I'm not Snoop Dogg. You know, but somehow <laughs> I, I figured I'm out sure, a way I'm to sure somehow reach out to potheads over the years, and it's not just like hey, I'm smoking good weed because half the time I'm not even smoking weed, but I'm talking about something or I'm fighting something, I'm resisting something. Right. And that's. That's kind of what I push out all the time. Well, here's the thing, uh, you know, to quickly, like, almost like wrap up. Like, you have such great stuff here. I mean, this, this I mean, <laughs> I've never, when I walked in here, the restaurant in the back, you have the, uh, like, you have the smoke area here. It was called, it wasn't it called a temple or that? Um, mm -hmm. It's called the Liberty Bell Temple. The middle, it's three buildings really here. It's a restaurant. The middle building is uh, uh, Liberty Bell Temple. And the third building is the stash spot right but once you're inside the building they're all connected inside and it's a common back area for people who don't know so anyway here's what if i have some closing words i'll say listen come on down to the joint Hell nj yeah. weed man's joint 322 east state street we're eighths ounces and chicken wings <laughs> eighths ounces and eighths chicken ounces wings. and chicken, chicken wings, wings. <laughs> now now we have different days. We have, like I was saying earlier to you guys, on 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 the first, third, and the first, second, and third Wednesday of every month is comedy night. The fourth Wednesday we alternate. It turns into anything. Uh, there was we even have LGBT night is on a Wednesday. There you go. Um, we have uh, reggae nights on Fridays. Like right now, it's early. The reggae DJs out there on the patio. There's reggae music if y'all can hear it in the background. Yeah. Um. You know, Saturdays, we call Sativa Saturdays, you know, because the menu's got uh, infused. What is your menu like, like, by the way? Yeah, you got to go check it out. But but it's munchy food, you know, but there's some good heavy meals on there, too. It's not just like, you know, crackers and cheese, you know, it's nothing like that. You know, yeah, munchy food is always good. Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, the, 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 the hamburgers and fries and turkey burgers. Your kitchen's still got, open, right? Yeah, kitchen's All open. All right, I'm going to go. I got to grab yeah, something, you know. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. And listen, you know how many people get the munchies and they're sitting here ch hanging out and they're listening to music, this, that, and the other, and then they get hungry and they yeah, buy yeah. some food and they leave with the food. So people come here a lot. I'm going to come here a lot now. Yeah. Actually, you know, you're yeah, going to be seeing my ugly ass here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Smoking and, and, and where can we find chilling. you on social media? Um, Instagram, I'm using a lot more now than I ever did before, but it's NJ Weedman at Instagram. And watch out on Instagram because on Instagram, I have a whole lot of people that spoof my page. Yeah. And they try to, like, I don't know, they're, they're ripping people off. They give up false information. I am. They're impersonating N you, right? Yes, they're impersonating right, yeah. me. But what they do is they add little letters, a little this, or the little N, that. There's an extra N yeah. on one of them. Yeah. Extra N, add a zero, put a 420 sometimes. And what are they usually trying to do? Just ask they're for really money? They're really trying to rip people off. Wow. They uh, see. I don't sell and send noth nothing. I don't. I don't engage in no mailing at all. Right. Right. Uh, I have a place. This is what I say. I right, have right. a place right here. Come see me. I'm K. Uh, come see me. I'll talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. Right here. I don't do none of the internet stuff. I don't mail nothing. I don't want nobody's money. I don't want none of that on the mail. But other people do it by faking me, and they're just ripping people off. I mean, I've had so many people like, Yo, man. I thought I was talking to you, and I gave this guy fifteen hundred bucks. Yo, guy, oh, wow. I thought, yo, thousands. I had a lady come walking in here one day. She's right there where that tripod is. She was standing right there, and she said she lost twenty three hundred dollars 
to somebody who's impersonating me. Wow. And she said she was mad at first. And as she was gearing herself up to come confront me, she realized that she wasn't talking to me. She was talking to a fake person. But then she came and told me. And I felt so bad for her, you know? I felt bad for her. And, it, and there's so many of them. Yeah, it's like, it's like so many of them. $750 here, $150 there. A young lady just recently, I was, I was going down, um, I was up, up Route 1, and she's taking pictures of me in my car. I have this weed mobile. So she's taking pictures of me in the car, and she gets me to pull over, and we do a selfie, and I Instagram back and forth with her a couple times. And then she thought that she was communicating with me on Instagram, and she was communicating with, with, with this the dude, fake guy. the fake the scammers, guy, yeah. who said that he was going to deliver it to her. So she told her husband, oh. weed man's coming to my house. They were all ready. We, like her and her husband, her husband smokes weed. He was mad that when she met me on the side of the highway, he wasn't in the car. So he's like, yes, weed man's coming to my house. They're going to deliver weed. I don't deliver weed, by the way. Right? <laughs> so, so, but this is what she tells me. She says, and then we realized that we got scammed. Like, first of all, why would they have to send money for me to come deliver it? Like, yeah. and then, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, and then yeah. like, they're in, like, Hopewell. Like, just drive over here and get it. So, while you know, you're, like, wow. so, so, but when somebody's from, like, Texas or Chicago, they inbox me, like, dude, I just got had by your scammer. And yeah. that's, and it's happening all over the country. So, well, for all your fans beat. out there now, right, how do we know it's you? I say, listen, <laughs> I don't, I do not mail weed. I don't mail. If somebody's, so. if somebody's trying to tell you to give you the cash it's out. Not the man. Me, I'm not not, this it's guy. not me. And you should video chat with the person. Get the person live. Yeah. You know, get the person live. It's not me. It's not me. Yeah. When I when I when I when I, when I talked to you on the phone, I talked to you. I felt bad because you were all pissed because you were, you were paying some like you were paying some type of ticket up in Birmingham or weren't you going up north like this Wednesday or something? Oh like? yeah. Are you supposed uh, to go to yeah. uh, 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 Bingh- Binghamton? Yeah. You sound all pissed. You're like, yeah, I gotta. F- Fucking go! <laughs> I, I, like, yeah, I, I yeah. got him on a rough day, man. Yeah, I, was I like, think I was pissed. talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I couldn't get out of pain. Nothing on the line. Yeah. And then and I was and like, "Yo, then, that's far." I was like, "That's that's a far ride." And then guess what? Then they closed the courts. Did you? You went? No, I didn't oh. go. I was getting ready to go. So then they did close oh. the courts. So, but now I can't figure out, and I don't want like them to issue a warrant or nothing for me. I tried to get them on the phone, couldn't get them on the phone, nothing. Now I probably didn't spend enough time. Like tomorrow, if I just get up at nine o'clock in the morning and call, 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 right, until well. I get somebody, I probably get somebody. But yeah, I got, I caught a ticket up there in Binghamton. I was speeding, and I caught a ticket on my way to a weed uh, harvest festival, the New York Harvest Festival. So I caught a ticket. Now I have to go to court and. Because it was a speeding violation, I have to go to court. Like that's how they treat speeding well, violations. Yeah, I'm sorry you got that, but you sounded yeah. pretty pissed. And I was like, oh man, oh. I got this guy on a wrong day. <laughs> I it's thought you're gonna something miles away. Yeah, and you got to. Uh, yeah, that's pretty shitty. Know, yeah, that's pretty and, shitty. Yeah. And it's like at three o'clock, three p.m. Like your whole day is yeah, gone, your whole day is shot. And you know it's gonna last until six or seven or eight o'clock. So then you're coming home. It's like twelve o'clock at night. So I was like, ah oh, man, I couldn't get out of it. No way. And then like I said, they changed their like uh, uh, like. That same day or two, Monday or two months, because of the COVID thing, they raised yeah. the, this and their courts closed again. They're, you know, so I was like, okay, how do I deal with this now? Right. Yeah. You know what? It's always something, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially with this guy. <laughs> it's it's yeah. one thing after another after yeah. another. Uh, actually, that's just a minor thing. I'll take care of that. Yeah. You know what the best thing for me to pride. do would be to call right in that town, contact the lawyer in that town, and ask them to represent me in that town because the the couple hundred dollars i would go back and forth going back to court all the time yeah every it'll time, add up it'll add up anyway yeah, you're right so i get me a lawyer in that town pay him to represent me and ask if what he can do about the speeding ticket it's just a speeding ticket yeah if he can change to anything but a speeding ticket speeding tickets affect your points and all that so change to anything i don't care i don't care what he changes it to but if i can get somebody to change it then i'd be, be good happy. i'd be happy and if i had to show up in court one time to plead guilty that's better than coming back for three or four absolutely times, man you know? that's a long ass yeah, so i think ass. i'm gonna do that but guys you know this ed this was absolutely amazing you know just just what you're about what you're you know what you're doing um we've had a great industry. time here man this place yeah. is great uh, it's not oh, done i'm hanging this out place like is great like, yeah, like, yeah. like this place no, you hang out. listen we have crab night tonight yeah cannabis and crab i might eat some cannabis and cra- cannabis on comics we'll eat the cannabis on crabs <laughs> yeah. we'll take care of that but ed yeah. Yeah, i just want now, you to listen, know if you come amazing, on a friday man. night cannabis and crabs let me explain the crabs it's no it's uh uh 
the uh oh man snow crabs big, snow crabs um we had you know what we had the whole crabs but man young people don't eat whole crabs no more you know i eat like, the blue crab I, yeah but yeah, so many people open. don't want so i had them yeah. both but a lot of people don't so we had better luck with the with crab the crab legs, legs you yeah. know so all right so the crab legs is really what we're all always selling here right now now the crab leg is not simmered in in can of butter but what you do is you have the sauce to the butter yeah. the dipping sauce is infused most people don't even use the whole thing so you take you know you take it home you can put it on anything you can pour it in you can pour it in your barbecue sauce and make Get high chicken if you want. Uh, we're getting on that, dude. With it. We're, getting, we're getting that. Yeah. No, we're getting, we're getting on the crab thing. That's what we're doing yeah, out of here. Yeah. We're, we're taking care of yeah, it. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, totally. But guys, here we go, man. I really, Ed, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, like man. this guy, this is a great amazing, <clears throat> amazing time. Uh, went to comics on cannabis, where cannabis and entertainment <clears throat> meet each other. We talk everything from cannabis sports. Uh, Pop culture, just a cool place to hang out. And if you want to continue to hang out with us, go to www.comicsoncannabis.com and or follow us on at, at Instagram at Comics on Cannabis. And next Wednesday, they're going to be here again. And we're going to do stand-up comedy here. That's right. So, uh, Ed, <laughs> amazing place. Thanks again for everything. Derek? Man, I had a great time, man. Thanks for letting us hear. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go, no, 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 go no, monitor no, no, some crabs, man. That's no, how's that I'm, weed, I'm about to do it, man. Dude, weed. it went out. Dude, it went out. Dude, I didn't dude, want to interrupt. Did, dude, yeah, but I'm going to get just, back on it right now. Asked, I, I appreciate it. I sat here and looked at me. I, <laughs> I appreciate That's it. why I was spewing on and on and on and talking about, like, tickets and Binghamton and stuff. Because I'm... Because I got high. Because I got high. So, as far as that, guys, we are out. Yeah.